Thank you for tuning in to the Into the Classroom series produced by Mental Health California, sponsored by Blue Shield of California's Blue Sky Initiative. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Into the Classroom, which is a student mental health awareness multimedia series produced by Mental Health California. I'm your host, Conrad Crump, affectionately known as Coach Crump, and today's topic is exploring the power of mindfulness. Now, in today's fast-paced world, mindfulness has become a valuable tool for managing stress, improving focus, and enhancing your overall well-being. So join us today as we learn more about the science behind mindfulness and its benefits for mental and physical health. We'll also be discussing practical techniques to incorporate mindfulness into your daily life, and we'll share some personal stories of how it has transformed the lives of our guests and others. Today, I'm pleased to introduce and welcome our Brother Be Well mindfulness expert, Grace Cecilio. Grace is a former elementary school teacher and social emotional learning facilitator. She's a national speaker and a professional development educator. She teaches mindfulness to help us move from feeling chaos and stressed to being calm and connected. Grace has a variety of tips and tools to maximize our mental wellness. Welcome, Grace. How are you today? Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> I am doing very well. Thank you so much. Awesome. And I'd actually like to take the time to introduce some of our youth guests who will be joining us today. First, we have with us Joel Suazo from Los Angeles City College. Hey, what's up, Joel? What's up, Coach Crump? It's good to be here. All right, there we go. And we also have Keyshawn Williams, who is a recent graduate of Sacramento State University. What's good, Keyshawn? Hey. How you doing, Coach? Good to see you. Great. Thank you. Good to see you, too. We also uh, have with us Meant to Be Craig, who is a student from C.K. McClatchy High School. How's it going, Meant to Be? Hey, Coach Crump. It's going well. Good, good. And last but not least, we have with us Michael Betlack from Sacramento State University. What's up, Michael? Good evening, everybody. It's great to be here. Wonderful. Now, before we get into the topic of mindfulness, I'd actually like to ask Grace if she can give us a brief overview into mindfulness and its impact on the mental health um, um, as it being a tool for young folks. Absolutely. So mindfulness has been a buzzword over the past few years, really all over the place. I hear it all the time. But what is it really? I think when you boil it down, it really comes down to focused awareness. It's the ability to focus on one thing, the thing that you're doing right in this moment. I like to say to be where your feet are instead of on the phone or your mind thinking about what's next, but really present and aware of that utilizing your emotional, your, your physical space, and just how you are in general to really be able to access what you're focused on, whether that's school, your friends, your family, or something completely different. So giving that overall focused awareness on whatever you choose to do so that you can be the best in that moment. Wow. Thanks a lot for that, Grace. That's some powerful information. Now, let me ask our young folks that are here, just by a show of hands, um, how many of us here actually use mindfulness techniques as a tool to help us in our lives? Wow. I'm impressed. I am impressed. And you know what? I will just say that you guys are ahead of the game because 
a lot of folks uh, your age particularly are not aware of mindfulness techniques, or if they are, they may not be utilizing them. So kudos to you all. I mean, just by the show of hands, you guys are just that much further ahead. So now let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty of exploring the power of mindfulness. Now, uh, if we're going to talk about the origins of mindfulness, we'd have to go back. Mindfulness has its roots in ancient Buddhist traditions, but has been adapted for secular purposes in modern times. It involves paying attention to the present moment with non-judgmental awareness. Research has shown that practicing mindfulness can have numerous mental health benefits for high school and college students going back into the origins of mindfulness. So mindfulness helps students develop skills to manage stress and anxiety by focusing on the present moment. Students can cultivate a sense of calm and help to reduce the impacts of stress that they may feel. Regular mindfulness practices enhances their attention and concentration and can allow students to stay focused on tasks and improve their academic performance. Next slide. So as we look at the emotional intelligence and regulation that comes with mindfulness, we understand that mindfulness can help students to observe their emotions without judgment, leading to better emotional control and resilience. And actually, Grace, I'd like to pivot and ask you if you can maybe talk to us about how mindfulness can help with emotional intelligence. Absolutely. Uh, when we are practicing mindfulness, we get to act in the role of observer. And to, to, to put it plainly, you get to almost step outside of your feelings and notice what you're feeling in that moment. I mean, how often do you, in the moment of anger or sadness, you're like, oh, you know what? I'm mad or I'm angry or I'm just hungry. Whatever that feeling is, how often do you actually pause to notice what you're feeling as opposed to just reacting to the feeling? And I think that's the difference when we are practicing mindfulness, we get to step back and out of the heat of the emotion and actually see how am I affecting the people around me and how am I affecting myself with my behavior because of this feeling. So we get to really increase that emotional intelligence. We see what's happening and maybe even respond a little differently because of that pause. We get to see, oh, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't just take all of my anger out on my brother right now or say that particular thing to my mom. I can actually, again, step back and take, uh, take into consideration what I'll do next. Wow, thank you so much for that. That's very informative and powerful information. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and go on into our next slide. So when it comes to the connection of breathing and breath work and mindfulness, we see that breathing is an integral part of mindfulness practice. Um, and it's also something that where we focus on, by focusing on the breath, students can anchor themselves in the present moment, something that Grace was talking about, uh, which can help cultivate a state of mindfulness. Breathing deep through the diaphragm and other breathwork exercises can actually further enhance mindfulness by promoting relaxation and reducing stress. And we're going to get into some of that a little bit later on, but let's go ahead and continue on with the conversation and go on into our next slide. So looking at the intersection of meditation and mindfulness and breath work and all of these things, right? We understand that meditation is a practice that's often associated with mindfulness that involves intentionally focusing your attention and cultivating that state of calm and clarity, focusing on that moment, that right now moment that Grace uh, mentioned. And now meditation can take on various forms, such as guided meditation, uh, loving kindness meditation, or body scan meditation. And by incorporating meditation into their mindfulness practices, students can deepen their awareness and develop a greater sense of inner peace. Now, at the top of the um, conversation, we talked about how many folks by a show of hands utilize mindfulness. And I'd actually like to just get a little bit of feedback and ask, um, you know, starting with you, meant to be of your mindfulness practices that you use or you utilize, 
um, you know, maybe talk to us about what they are or what that one thing is and how it helps you. Um, I've been doing this thing where I'm processing my emotions one step at a time, making sure that I'm viewing the situation. And then after that, I'm like, okay, why am I upset? Why, or why am I affected by it? Because we do experience most emotions of all kind. So once I do that, I'm like, okay, this is why this made me feel this way. And this is how I can move on, you know, to for future solutions. So that's just what I've been practicing. Wonderful. Thanks for that. And how about you, Joel? Um, one technique that I use, um, usually it's when, so I have two dogs, um, and they need a lot of exercise. So usually when I have to take them out or, you know, go outside, I always leave my phone at home. I'll leave it charging or something. And then I'll go on that walk. I'll be with nature and I'll just recognize that, you know, I'll see the leaves. I'll breathe the air and see what different type of smells I see. Um, if I can hear any birds, um, I kind of just, you know, try to get out of my head sometimes because I know sometimes we're like fully um, worried about all of the stuff that we have to do in a day or next week, tomorrow, next month and et cetera. So that definitely helps um, ground myself and then I feel re-energized and I come back and get to work. <laughs> No, that's good stuff. I really appreciate, um, you know, the part where you talked about how you're being aware, that sense of awareness of what you're hearing, what you're smelling, what you're seeing. Um, you know, oftentimes in this fast paced world, it's like so many different things that we kind of miss. But just stopping for a moment and just identifying that is certainly, uh, I think, a practice of mindfulness as well. So thank you both for that. Um, let's go ahead and go on to our next slide. So now we know that there are mindfulness practices and there's actually schools that are successfully integrating mindfulness practices. Uh, Manhattan Hunter Science High School and San Francisco's June Jordan School for Equity have both successfully integrated mindfulness practices into their classrooms, which have yielded positive results for their students. Uh, the mindfulness schools program that's been implemented in various schools across the country has shown improvement in students' attention, emotional regulation, and overall well-being. Um, let's go ahead and go to our next slide. And we see that the Mindful Life Project out of Richmond, California is a nonprofit that serves San Francisco Unified, Oakland Unified, and other Bay Area Unified school districts. And they offer free digital mindfulness resources to, stu to schools. And students who receive mindfulness instruction have reported reduced stress levels, increased self-awareness, and improved academic performance. So clearly something's going on here. Um, and I'd like to ask um, you, Michael, you know, if you can maybe talk to me about if you had mindfulness practices, maybe in high school or maybe even in college, um, how that may have helped you or shaped, um, you know, your outcomes as a young person. Yeah, I feel like if I was more aware of it, um, in my younger high school years, it probably would have saved me a lot of negative emotions that I felt, you know, to the present day, or um, certain experiences where I might have let those emotions control my actions. Um, I feel like it's real important to pay attention to, you know, what's going on in your mind and how to really address it. Because if not, like um, Grace was saying earlier, you know, it can lead to some, to you just acting out. And, you know, that's important to make sure that you're on top of that. And so I feel like, you know, it being implemented in school, it's a real, it's a real um, just great method to help, to help pr provide the students with help, you know, because there's a lot of stress that puts, gets put on students with school, um, with pressures of, you know, trying to fit in. And so being able to be mindful about what they're feeling and have techniques to address it, I feel like that's, you know, really important. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Thanks for that feedback, Michael. Um, how about you, Keyshawn? You know, just thinking about mindfulness and maybe even breathing and breath work, you know, how could that have helped you and, and you on your journey as a young person? For me, I think it's really helped, actually. I feel like um, having mindfulness allows you to be truthful with yourself. So when you're truthful with yourself and you acknowledge your emotions and the emotions that you're experiencing, um, that 
actually helps you with them instead of trying to run from it. Usually if I'm experiencing negative emotion in the past, I would try to run right past it or I would try to not acknowledge it. And that actually creates more of a problem because you're not handling the problem at itself. And so being truthful with myself by practicing mindfulness and maybe breathing and um, saying, okay, I'm feeling anxious right now and that's okay. And how do I move on from this? How do I attack this? What's the problem? That has helped me um, get over it a lot better than just running from it. Great feedback, man. I appreciate that honesty and, and you know, being able to be aware and honest and true with yourself and how it has helped you, I think is a huge benefit for myself, for others listening, you know, folks in the audience. Um, just, you know, being able to employ those strategies is huge. Um, so let's go ahead and go on to our next slide. You know, as we see these strategies for incorporating mindfulness into the classroom, they include integrating short mindful moments throughout the day, like just taking a few minutes of silence before transitioning to a new activity, um, especially during stressful periods. Um, you know, teachers have the opportunity to start each class with a brief, a brief mindful breathing exercise to help students center themselves and prepare for learning. So, you know, all of these ways, all of these things are different ways that, um, you know, we can incorporate mindfulness into the classroom. I can recall, you know, at one of the elementary schools uh, in Sacramento, uh, their, their entire school starts off their day before they all go into their classrooms um, um, at the playground and all of them do yoga. And I think it's about a 15 minute window where all of the students are doing like different poses and all of these different things. And I had never seen anything like that. And I thought it was so cool because I was like, wow, you know, this is something that is incorporating a mindfulness practice and mindful movement um, in the lives of young people and introducing it to them at least. So I thought that was awesome. Let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. So again, incorporating mindful movement activities, again, like yoga, breath work, um, you know, stretching breaks, all of these things can help uh, release tension and Im improve body awareness. And going on into our next slide, we also understand that minimizing distractions is a key component for mindfulness practice. Much like Joel said, take the phone, leave it at home and, and focus on yourself. You know, this also includes finding a quiet space or a space without interruptions. Um, also, this includes creating a routine where you can dedicate time each day to your mindfulness practice and also realizing that consistency is key. You know, having the ability to continue um, your practice is going to do nothing but be a huge benefit for you in the long run. So let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. And actually, at this time, I'd like to pivot and turn it over to Grace because I'd like to do an exercise. And I know this wasn't probably planned. Um, you probably weren't preparing for this, um, but I'd actually like to ask you if you could help us through a guided brief breathing exercise just to demonstrate for our audience what mindfulness can look like. Absolutely, I would love to. Before we do that though, I do wanna just add one quick little tidbit Please. that you know, mindfulness as a practice, yes, consistency is key, but the reality is you're not always going to find a quiet place. And I just want to emphasize that that should not deter you because the reality of our lives is that there's so much going on and the practice is finding your peace within the chaos. So not avoiding it. <laughs> um, all right. With that, let's do a little breathing exercise that we can you can implement into your daily life something that will just give you a little extra tool to add to your tool belt wherever whenever any place at all so this is a way, an exercise to really help deepen your breath so we'll all take our hands and just place it over your chest and take a deep breath Feel the air enter your chest and then exhale, let it all out. And if you feel like closing your eyes, you're welcome to do so, or you might just lower your gaze right down the tip of your nose. 
And then take another deep breath. This time, bring your hands to your ribs. And as you breathe in, let the air travel through your chest and then expand your ribs out to the side. And then exhale, let it all out. Nice. Now inhale through the chest, expand the ribs and deepen the belly. You might place your hands onto your belly and feel your, your belly press against your hands. And as you exhale, let it all out. Now we're going to deepen all three parts of our torso, just like that, three deep breaths together. Inhale through your chest, widen the ribs, expand your belly. Slight pause at the top, then exhale, let it all out. Soften your shoulders, relax your jaw. That's it. Inhale through your chest, expand the ribs, open the belly. Then exhale, let it all out. Feel any tension melt away as you breathe out. And final breath together. Inhale, expanding each part of your torso with intention. And then exhale, let it all go. And then gently return to the natural rhythm of your breath. Notice what it feels like as the air enters and exits your nostrils. Does it tickle? Is it warm? Cool? Something else? And when you feel satisfied, you'll gently blink your eyes open and return into the space. All right. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, How are you feeling, you so, Coach? <laughs> thank you so much for that, Grace. <laughs> I am feeling a lot more relaxed, <sighs> a lot more <laughs> calm, you know, a bit more at ease. I mean, I know we're in the middle of a production, but I got to keep it real. Like, I am just ready to just chill right now because – yes. The power of breath, you know, the power of breathing. Let me ask uh, some of the other folks. Keyshawn, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah, I love to do that kind of exercise. It really helps me, like you said, relax. And you'd be surprised how, I mean, you sounded surprised right now, how much it actually works and how you can really let go and let your body just fall and like let your muscles fall away and let your worries fade away. Yes, yes. How about you, meant to be? It always feels good to just take some time and inhale and exhale and just let everything go and also bring back positive energy to the body. So it look good. Yes, yes. You know, I actually have started recently taking deep breaths when I try to get myself to go to sleep. Um, sometimes at night, it's difficult for me to go to sleep, but I notice that when I start doing breath work and taking those deep breaths, it helps me just really calm myself. And then I can ease into the, the night's rest that I need for my body. So that's awesome. Thank you so much again for that, Grace. That was very helpful, super helpful. And, you know, as we've just seen mindfulness in practice in real time, it doesn't really take a lot. Um, it doesn't have to be this long, drawn out thing. You know, you can start with just a quick, short session, you know, and eventually gradually build up over time. And I also like the aspect of how, Grace, you mentioned, even if there are distractions going on, you know, being able to be able to find your peace and find that that focus in the midst of chaos is truly a skill, you know, and it's something that can truly help you in life when things are going on and stuff's happening in life being able to center yourself and find yourself and find your calm is is really i think a powerful tool to get ourselves you know in in a wellness space um, of mindfulness so thank you again and you know again you, as we stated, we try to be consistent with these things. You know, I ain't going to lie. It's hard sometimes, but being patient with ourselves and finding that mindfulness of, hey, you know, let me try to get in a breath work or, hey, let me try to go out in nature and, you know, do different types of things that some of our, our youth participants had talked about earlier today are really the key to finding that overall well-being. Um, so let's let's go ahead and go to our next slide. 
So when it comes to peer driven mindfulness practices, um, you know, we know that obviously mindfulness with consistency and patience are essential. And we'll go ahead and go to our next slide as well. Looking at peer driven mindfulness practices, you know, resources are certainly available to help reduce mental health stigma and promote peer driven mindfulness practices. There are multitude of online platforms. Uh, there's a bunch of mindfulness apps that are available. You know, these are options that can help provide mindfulness exercises. Um, and lastly, I feel that the importance of peer support groups and student-led mindfulness clubs can also provide a supportive community for practicing that mindfulness together. Um, I want to shoot it to you, Michael, and ask you, what might be some of the benefits of having a peer-led support group um, of mindfulness? I feel like that would be really important to have, and it would be a great idea because not only are um, you on this journey by yourself, but you have people surrounded around you who can kind of hold you accountable to a sense to make sure that, you know, we're all working on being mindful and trying to just take a second and you know, take a deep breath and focus on what we're feeling and focus on the present. I feel like it takes away um, maybe some, you know, some people might feel weird doing it or feel like maybe I'm doing it wrong, you know, stuff like that. If you have other people around you, I feel like it makes it more of a more comfortable type of situation. And I feel like it can, you know, deeply benefit people who get involved in, you know, those type of peer support groups. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Michael. And, you know, with that, there is an element of stigma. And I know we kind of briefly glossed over it. Um, you know, that's something that a lot of folks, young folks particularly, worry about is the element of stigma. Um, Joel, I'd like to ask you, like, maybe if you can kind of just tell us why might young folks feel stigmatized or, um, you know, have a sense of stigma when it comes to mindfulness practices? Yeah, um, so I think that there's a lot of stigma behind it because, you know, more recently we have started to talk about mental health, um, especially of men and female of color. Um, often in our communities, um, people, I, I didn't really see people that practiced mindfulness or had good mental health, good physical health. Um, so overall, like, you know, I think it would just be good for us, um, you know, for whoever's listening, whoever's watching and everybody here participating, um, just teaching and giving advice that, you know, um, it is not like it is a stigmatized thing, but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, it can really help everyone and, you know, help you manage your emotions and overall just stay grounded in the present moment. Yeah, no, that's really good. And also, I want to add the aspect of having, um, you know, your support groups of folks who, you know, are, you know, like you, who have, you know, experienced the things that you've experienced, you know, having that cultural competency, um, you know, to be able to have these types of discussions and do these types of exercises. And, you know, Grace, maybe you can kind of touch on some of this, you know, when it comes to having cultural competency, um, you know, with a peer support group or, you know, having folks, you know, doing these type of exercises, the importance of being able to find your, your people, you know, so maybe you can kind of touch on that a little bit. Yes, I completely agree. It's so supportive to have other people along the journey with you. And it's hard to find that group of people. But already here, we have four in youth individuals that just already feel like the community is building. So reach out to people that that you relate to or that seem like they're on a journey that feels similar to yours because you never know what connection you can make, whether it's let's go hang out at the park and just be outside for a few minutes between classes or let's go on a walk at, at the beach or something along those lines where you can implement these mindfulness practices. It doesn't have to be meditating as a group together for an hour every week. It can be much simpler than that. And being able to text each other and ask for support or ask questions to 
go through whatever that emotional state and dive into the reflection together. That can all be just so incredibly supportive. And as an individual who grew up without that support, it really, when I got into adulthood and found the people that were along this path with me, it it just really expedited my growth. So I think as, as young people, the the ability to connect is limitless nowadays with social media and all of the tools you have at your fingertips, literally at your fingertips. So take advantage of that. There are many online groups as well. Well, Grace, thank you again. I mean, I couldn't have thought of a better way to, to kind of wrap us up with a final thought because everything you said is 100% spot on. Um, you know, I want to give a thank you, huge thank you to you, Grace, just for taking the time to share your wisdom, um, you know, provide us with a, an example of a mindfulness technique that we can use in our everyday lives. Um, I'd like to also give a special shout out to Joel. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and your wisdom. Special shout out to Keyshawn. I appreciate you every time, you know, being able to contribute. Thank you. And thank you, Meant to Be, just for being here and sharing some insights with us. I also want to give a shout out to you too, Michael. You know, thank you all just for being in the space, holding space uh, with us today, just to have a wonderful conversation. And I also want to thank our audience for joining the Into the Classroom session, which is a production of Mental Health California. Please be sure to visit us at mentalhealthca.org. To access health and mental wellness topics for boys and men of color, please visit our signature initiative at brotherbewell.com and be sure to subscribe to our blog. And a huge thank you to our sponsor, Blue Shield of California's Blue Sky Initiative, which promotes access to mental health support. And you can learn all about their program at bluesky.blueshieldca.com. With that, I'm your host, Conrad Crump, also known as Coach Crump. Until next time, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.